one time. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? That's what we write. Awesome job, brothers and sisters. This is what the Teamsters do. This is who we are. We are united more than ever before. And UPS better wake up and hear our call. Brothers and sisters, there's one thing that we do in Boston that is the secret formula for the labor movement. It's called unity. And that's what we do here. We are united more than ever before. And we have a great program here for you today. We have the general president with us. We have the general secretary treasurer with us. And you know why? Because they want to come where it starts. This is where we get shit done, is in Boston. That's what we do. Before I get to the next speaker, I'm going to give you an overview of what's been going on in New England. We've been meeting since January 22nd, I believe, was the first day. We've met on eight different occasions. And I'll tell you this, brothers and sisters, it's actually disgusting. The company wants to come in and take away after you guys have killed yourselves for the last five years, giving them the sweat equity is what you exchange for your contract every five years. And we've given them our sweat equity like never before through a pandemic that has kicked our ass along with everybody else's. So I got one thing to say to UPS. Concessions aren't happening in New England. Can you record? No concessions in New England. What do you say, brothers and sisters? That's right. What you got to understand is we put, put, we put forward tons of proposals. We took every proposal that you put forward and we put it forward to the company. Company looked at those proposals and instead of coming in and saying they want to stick with what they got, they went the opposite direction. They're going negative now. This company is doing exactly what myself, General President Sean O'Brien, General Secretary Tre Treasurer Zuckerman knew was going in. We expect this. We don't expect them just to give us what we want. We expect it to be a hard fight, brothers and sisters, but we've got your back because we've got the best negotiators in the country taking on UPS. We've got the best committee in the country taking on UPS. In New England, brothers and sisters, I give you one promise. That promise is there'll be no concessions. The concession stand is closed. My name is Jane Fallon. I work part-time at the South Boston UPS building. I'm a shop steward, and I work the early morning shift. We go in about 4 in the morning and usually wrap up about 8 or 9 in the morning. And, I mean, that's the side of the job that I think so many people don't see. I was, I was wondering if you could say a little bit about how long you've been doing that work and what that work entails, like, that maybe folks, yeah, like, don't get the behind-the-scenes view. Right. Okay. So we get up very early in the morning, <laughs> and we head into work, and we, some of the kids unload the trailers that come in with all the big packages, and we unload them, put them through the process, and then we load them into the trucks for the drivers to deliver. And uh, how'd you become a shop steward? Actually, the union came to me and asked me if I would be interested in doing it, and, you know, I said I don't know a whole lot but I'll learn and I've learned a lot and I I love it it's it's empowering it makes you feel like you're a part of the system and you can help people out because some people you know don't management will go after you know the quieter people the people that really don't stand up for themselves and it's nice to be able to tell them that you can come to me if you have an issue and I'll try to help you and we can guide you in the right direction well, and that's, yeah, that's so important because, as we know, so many people on the job feel like they have nowhere to turn. Right, right. right. And, and, you know, I, I'm just kind of blown away by the energy here. We're obviously standing outside of uh, Teamsters Local 25. Um, President Sean O'Brien just talked about the upcoming uh, contract fight with UPS. Right. I was wondering if you could say a bit more about what you and, and your coworkers are going through. Like, what are the sort of key issues... Um, that are gonna, you know, be on the table during this okay. contract fight. Well, for us, we're part timers, so um, we need a pay raise. I mean, the part timers that really don't get thought of too much, and we get up, you know, early in the morning and work. It's a tough shift, and you, you know, your family has to adjust. You have to adjust. You know, typically we go in at four and work till maybe eight or nine, like I said. But Christmas time, you know, our time can be rolled back to midnight. You know, and we have to adjust to it. There's, it's not optional. You know, sometimes we're forced to work six days a week, and they don't think of that. They just expect it, you know, it's, and we do it. We adjust. We're flexible. You have to be flexible. And um, 
you know, for a company that makes billions and billions of dollars, I think they can afford to pay their part-timers a living wage. Hell yeah. And like I know from experience, from talking to so many other workers like that, the bosses try to use those tiers of workers, the part-timers, the new hires, right. the old timers, like they pit us against each other. Right. I was wondering if you could like, are you seeing that? Do you feel like uh, at least on the, the union side that um, folks are rallying more together across the different uh, part-timers, full-timers? Absolutely. They do try to use the part-timers when they're cutting back on the full-timers' hours. Right now, they're pretty strict with hours. They don't want anyone getting any overtime. But they'll kind of trickle a little bit of overtime to a part-timer just to kind of, you know, get the full-timers outraged and vice versa. They'll do, you know, and they try to separate us. Even as a steward, they'll try to divide the full-time stewards and the part-time stewards. You know, they want us to say, oh, he's doing that. You guys should get that. You know, like you know, like a grievance or whatever. But we are building anyways, and I think you know, all around, we stick together. We're we're all one. I mean, we're one union. We support each other, and they're not going to divide us. Hell yeah! And I guess, uh, what are you hearing from folks uh, as we gear up for the contract fight? We know that um, negotiations are set to begin later this month. Right. Contract expires uh, in in the summer. We heard a yeah, great July line. Yeah, July 31st. That if we don't have the contract members want by August 1st, we ain't working. Right. So is that is that the vibe that you're getting from your members? Absolutely. And I think everybody's standing by that. I mean, everyone's supporting. And it's great. It's really great. People are trusting the union to do the right thing by them. They know we have to do it. And I don't know anybody that isn't willing to make, if the union makes a decision to strike, I think everyone's 100% behind them. And I guess before I let you go, um, I wanted to ask like, um, if you have any messages for listeners out there uh, who don't work at UPS, maybe they're not in a union, but um, what can they do to show solidarity with y'all? And, and why is this fight important, not just for the Teamsters, but for all working people? You know, it, like Sean was saying, that it sets a precedent for labor unions going forward. And if we get a good contract, we realize that unions can stand up and they can, you know, get a living wage and they can get what they need and, you know, supported from management and, you know, management can play games like they will throw to the new people this market rate adjustment, the MRA. So they'll put that out there and people start at that rate. I think right now, I'm not sure what it is. And people come in and they're thinking, okay, we're making this money, not so bad. Then they snatch it away, you know, a couple months later. And people are up in arms like, we were making this, what happened? Mm -hmm. And they're coming to the union. And you know, we're saying we need to get that in the contract. It's not contractual, it's management. They can take it, they can give it, and they can take it. And it's not right. I have a question. Are you all ready to kick some ass for the working class? Yeah! Hell yeah. As Tom said, my name is Rob Atkinson. And I'm the UPS contract campaign coordinator. I started at UPS back in 1988 in a small center in western Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. There's one guy here from western Pennsylvania, a good friend of mine. I worked there for 27 years until they fired me back in 2015 in retaliation for union activity. I've, been, I've seen firsthand how this company treats their essential workers. What UPS did to me is a perfect example of how they respect Teamsters that work there. You all worked there through that pandemic. UPS went from making $4 billion a year to $14 billion a year. What has UPS done to show that they respect the sacrifices that you all made working through that pandemic while they increased their profits by 250%? Nothing. Well, I got news for them. We're here to collect our share. We demand what we've earned, and we, we, we demand what we deserve. We ain't asking for nothing that we shouldn't be getting. We kicked off this contract campaign back in August, and we've been coordinating actions at the gates in the parking lots with every local in the country since then. And what I've seen at every local is a hunger and a desire to do what it takes to force this company to share the wealth that they've accumulated from our hard work and sacrifices. Soon, you will see contract action team trainings coming to your area, near you. 
I urge you all to sign up and attend these trainings that will be conducted by our training and development team. These trainings are a critical and vital component for us to get the knowledge and skills we are going to need to fight for the wages, the benefits, the working conditions that we've earned and deserve. For years we said if we only had leadership that would fight for us at the bargaining table. Well, I got news for you. We have that leadership now. All that we need to do is stand behind them. Are we going to stand behind them? Yeah. Damn right we are. We're Teamsters. And when we all stand together, there's nothing. There's nothing that we can't achieve. And that is what UPS is about to find out. Thank you. start by introducing yourself. JJ Rodriguez from uh, the Franklin Building, Mass. And you work at UPS? UPS, yeah. How long you worked there? Uh, 10 years. Damn, what do you do? Uh, I drive. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, how are you feeling about today's rally? Oh, it's and... great. Yeah? Yeah, I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm ready to go in with the sweater tomorrow, I'm telling you, I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell me a little more about like what that job entails, because a lot of folks, we get our packages from you guys, yeah. but then we don't see all the shit you go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So like, what does a typical day look like for you? It all depends. Like, every day can be different. Like, some days you can have a great day, and some days you just, just everybody just buying stuff. So it's just like, it all depends. I mean, but other than that, like, it's, it's tough, you know, because it's like, you don't know what day you're walking into. Mm -hmm. Every day is different. And what sorts of like key issues um, are gonna be kind of on the table with these contract negotiations? Like what are you and your coworkers going through on the job that need to be addressed during the contract fight? Like the, the, the whole thing they call dishonesty. People who get fired for, they can lie to us, but they don't get fired, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's messed up. Because we will tell the truth and they'll still say that we're lying. But they can actually lie to us when we have proof and they don't, nothing happens to them. So hopefully that changes. Have you noticed any changes in, in the attitude of management since Sean came in and you got this like new energy in the Teamsters over the past year? No. No? They're still the same people. They yeah. haven't changed. And, it, and some, of the, some of the time it's not even from the managers. It's from up top, the people that you don't see, like the people that tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like... You guys never drove ever in your life, so once you come down here and do it for once, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before you tell us how to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess tell me a little bit about how you're feeling about um, the potential for a strike this strike? time. Strike? I'm uh, mixed reviews, you know, but I mean, we go on strike, we go on strike. We don't, we don't. I mean, it just, we have to go with the time going. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting, whatever happens, happens. I'm ready for the fight and we can go. Hell yeah. Um, but do you, I guess, do you have any like final messages for folks listening about uh, the importance of this contract fight and the work that you guys do? Just keep doing what you're doing, follow the contract, do the right thing, and stay strong, stay united. That's all that. Oh, perfect. Thanks Alrighty. so much, man. No problem. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody out there, and I appreciate you coming out. I want to talk about the UPS contract just a little bit. You know, five years ago next month, the general president and I stood in front of this building and announced that we were going to run for office because we saw all the things going bad in our union, particularly with the UPS contract. Negotiate a concessionary contract, then implement it when it was turned down. That was just unforgivable. That's why we ran for office. So we have turned, we have turned the union around uh, quite differently these days to accomplish different things. One of the things higher on our priority list was unity. We had to unite the union to get together to negotiate good contracts. When we first took office, the general president told everybody in the building that we are not negotiating contracts and we're going to get the contracts done on time. That goes for UPS. We started this battle with UPS back in August. We had the rallies. We got out and informed membership. 
Sean and I have been traveling all around the country talking to everybody we could talk to at UPS. We've been visiting preloaders at 5 o'clock in the morning. We've been visiting package car guys when they get off their routes. We've been visiting feeder guys, mechanics, and everybody else to find out from them what's important in this contract. And we think that we have gotten enough information to go to the table and negotiate with UPS everything that the members want. It's very important to us. We got the supplemental negotiations going on right now. We told UPS there will not be any concessions. You will get done on time. They're falling behind right now, not getting the supplements done by April 17th, because that's when we want to go into national negotiations. But you know what? They're going to have to pay a price for that. They are going to have to explain to the general president on April 17th why the hell they ain't done with the supplements. And, and, and they don't want to be in that position. I have got the distinct pleasure of working with the general president every day. I'm a 44-year Teamster. I have seen six general presidents in my career. And I am working with the best general president today that we have ever had. And everybody, every one of you that knows him knows that he's tough. He's a tough guy when it comes to negotiations. He's tough when he's representing the members. He's tough when he tells the companies that we will settle for nothing less than a great contract for everybody in the union, particularly UPS, because this is our fight coming up. You know, when we first took office, we had a couple contracts come up. We had car hall come up. We had about 67 days to negotiate that contract. And the general president was very clear no concessions, on time. We got the best contract in car haul that we have had for a very long time. We had American Red Cross come up. Same thing, on time, good contract, got a great contract out of there. Not only is it a great contract, but we are organizing more American Cross wor Red Cross workers today than we've been doing in the past. And we had DHL come up. And DHL, the last sticking point in that contract was inward-facing cameras. And we all know that story at UPS, right? We don't want them, right? And we are going to fight like hell to make sure that we get the same thing DHL gave us, that they will not have inward-facing cameras. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So this, this is going to be a long fight. We need everybody to stick together, which is crucially important to us. We are going into negotiations, Sean and I, in two weeks with the company at the national level. Hopefully they will hear our message today, getting these supplements done, because we have got to get them done before we start negotiating the national contract. Now, we're going into negotiations and we're telling UPS very clearly that we want a good contract for our members, and we want it done on time. If they don't get it on time, we're going to pick a fight with them. August the 1st, if we don't have the contract that you guys want by August the 1st, we're not working no more. We will continue to negotiate with the company, but there won't be a UPS person working on August the 1st if we don't have what we want. And being General Secretary Treasurer of the Teamsters Union, I can assure you that we will take care of you guys. We have over $300 million in our strike fund, and we will spend every penny of it to make sure that UPS employees get what they want in this contract. My name is Julie. I currently work for Workers United as a staff rep in Massachusetts for the Starbucks campaign. Um, I'm a former Starbucks partner, started with the company in 2005 uh, and worked on and off with them until just this past January when I moved over to the union. Hell yeah. And uh, I was very excited to, to see you. We're obviously, and apologies listeners, it's a little windy, 
but we are here outside of Teamsters Local 25. Uh, we just uh, watched a rally with um, Teamsters President Sean O'Brien talking about the upcoming contract fight with UPS. And I've spotted your Starbucks Workers United sweater here. I've seen you talking to Teamsters. Uh, I guess I just wanted to ask, yeah, like, why was it important for you to come out here? And what have you been hearing from folks? Well, it was important for me to be here because the, the Teamsters were, were here for us. So last summer, a location, a Starbucks location in Boston uh, went on a 64-day strike. Um, it was... There, there was no intention uh, or understanding of when the strike would end when they started. It was indefinite. And the Teamsters showed up for us every single day, did not cross the picket line, and helped that store maintain that strike until they were ready to end it. Um, and so now the Teamsters are out here fighting for their own contract. Uh, I want to help show support. The Starbucks workers are, are here to help show support. And we know that without interunion solidarity um, and without worker solidarity all across all industries, um, you know, we're, we have less of a chance. So when we work together, we fight together, we win together. Hell yeah. And uh, I have to ask, <clears throat> since we... Uh, this just this past week, we got to see old Howie Schultz on <laughs> Capitol Hill. I was wondering yeah. uh, if I could get your thoughts on that testimony. <laughs> um, you mean when he perjured himself under oath by Which saying... Which time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, denying, denying, denying that he has done anything wrong, that Starbucks has done anything wrong. They haven't broken any laws. They're just... <sighs> It's despicable. It's it's gross. And when we heard the testimony from those partners, from the workers, you can really see how blatant this company is lying. Um, it's all about ego with him. It always has been. I, I drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago when I started working at Starbucks in 2005. I was like, man, this company is great. The benefits are great. Howard Schultz is great. Like when he runs for president, I'm going to vote for him. Um, <laughs> I've changed my mind. Uh, this company let me down and it's let a lot of other workers down and watching him testify the way he did in front of Congress, um, the Senate, I just, it really sort of uh, sent that message home for me that he will never be on the worker side. He just doesn't get it. And I think our Senator Ed Markey really, really hit that home that he just does not understand. Um, because he's now in this place of privilege. He, he's so disconnected from the experience on the ground and what the workers are going through. Um, he's never going to get it. And just because he's not the CEO anymore, he's still on the board and he's still pulling strings and this fight isn't going to end. So we're just going to keep fighting. And, you know, I, I constantly tell people, right, you have to, like, stay committed to the Starbucks workers' struggles because as we saw from those testimonies, as I've heard time and time again from workers, people get excited when a new store files for an election, when they win the election. Yeah. But then after that, that's when management fucks with your schedules. That's when people get fired for flimsy reasons or even entire stores get closed down. So yeah. I wanted to ask like, if you had any kind of message for folks out there listening about why they need to stay committed to supporting y'all and what they can do to support you all. I mean, I'll, I'll start I'll start by answering the second question. What can they do to support? So go to your Starbucks. If you know it's a union, let them know that you support them. That energy is contagious. And when they know that they feel supported by their community, by the people who that they see every day, their regular customers, um, it goes a long way to, to maintaining that morale and that energy and helping them get across the finish line for this. Um, the first part of your question, I have completely forgotten what you asked. <laughs> uh, just why it's important for us to support oh, right. each other. Like yeah, you're yeah. out here supporting the UPS folks. Yes, absolutely. So the Starbucks campaign, what's going on right now with partners, baristas all across the country is sending a message to corporations that we're not going to let them get away with treating workers like this, regardless of what industry they're in, regardless of what job they perform, every worker deserves to have protections, to be protected from people who do not have their best interests at hand. And that is exactly what happens during, uh, you know, when they're working for these big corporations, they do not have the worker's best interest at hand. It's all about profits for them. Um, so when we show up as Starbucks partners, we're not only showing up 
as baristas, we're showing up as workers. And I think that that's really inspiring to remind everybody that you deserve a better workplace too. So, one more time, who are we? Easter. Who are we? Easter. All right, let's hear it for our general president, Sean M. O'Brien. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is this working? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a great honor and privilege to be back home where it all started. I want to thank you got the best, hottest working president, Local 25's history, Tom Murray. Let's hear it for Tom Murray. Listen, we have 15 days before we go sit across the table from this white-collar crime syndicate known as United Parcel Service, okay? 376 days ago, we had the honor and privilege to be elected by you to serve and protect the greatest institution in America, that is the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. And because of you putting the fate in us and our leadership team, you have proven that you want change. You have proven that we are not going to take and accept what UPS gives us. We're going to demand, take, and punish if they don't give us what we want moving forward. Now we have, from April 17th until July 31st, we have 12 weeks, 12 weeks to negotiate the largest collective bargaining agreement in the private sector throughout the entire United States. So what does that mean? That means that we are going to set the tone for organized labor. If you're a pipe fitter, if you're a plumber, if you're a bus driver, what we do in these negotiations is going to set the tone for the entire country, the entire labor movement moving forward. And you know what? There's no better organization to set that bar high than the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. So we have been crisscrossing the United States Every single week, we've hit 30 states and all multiple hundreds of hundreds of UPS facilities. We've also hit in freight. We've hit in construction. We're hitting every single workplace we can find because our message is clear. UPS's fight today may be your fight tomorrow. And if we are not united, one vision, one direction, one mission, it's to protect, preserve, and improve working conditions, then we are going to fail. I am so proud of what I see going on around this country. I am so proud when I talk to people and they have fire in their eyes. They got intestinal fortitude. They got burning desire in their stomachs to take on this company, a company that three years ago didn't care about you, didn't care about your families, but you were providing goods and services to keep this country moving. And what happened? They thought you were heroes. They were telling everybody, we have the best employees in the world. They're providing goods and services, making sure this country keeps going. Well, it's funny how, how fast they forget. And all they care about is the bottom line of their balance sheet. Our wages stayed the same. In some cases, they went down. But their balance sheet kept expanding. They made $100 billion dollars off the pandemic, $100 billion with a B. And what did we get? We got nothing. Well, that's gonna change April 17th, because when we go to the table, we go to the table, there is gonna be, there is gonna be no, no niceties across the table. We're gonna have rank and file members looking at this company, giving true testimonials on how bad this company treats their people, how they don't appreciate what we do or you do every single day. And we're going to remind them and we're going to remind the entire country because I've been, I've been going up to Capitol Hill every day telling them you got a problem with supply chain solution? July 31st, when Big Brown is shut down, you're going to see supply chain solution come to a halt. <laughs> and you know what? We're not afraid to do it. We are not afraid to do it. We have a motto at the IBT with our leadership team. We would rather ask for forgiveness than permission, right? And the good thing about us right now is that because of I get to work with the greatest general secretary treasurer in the entire Teamster movement and the entire labor movement. And what he's responsible for, he's responsible for the finances of this great international union, 1.3 million members strong. And UPS has to know and every other employee needs to know 
that we have $300 million in a strike and defense fund. $300 million to take on this fight. And look, I get the great, greatest job in the world. I get to write the checks. He's got to find a way to pay for it, right? So here's the reality of it. Prior negotiations, before we went to the convention in 2021, we always look for vulnerabilities, right? If you're fighting in the street or you're fighting in a ring or you're in a football field, you're in a hockey rink, you look at your opponent and you try and find their vulnerabilities. You try and find their weaknesses, right? We do the same in the labor movement and the companies do the same. Prior to 2021 in June, we will financially compromise our members. You know why? Because you had to wait eight days before you got paid on strike. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't wait. I can't go eight days without a paycheck. I've got bills. I've got tuitions. I've got boys to pay for. I've got homes to pay for, I, like everybody else, right? So we made certain that we changed that. So we are no longer financially compromised. I say we, the strongest link in our chain. That's our rank and file members. So moving forward, we take UPS out on the street, or we take Yellow, or we take anybody that wants to take our members on, we will be getting paid from day one, and you will not have to worry about the security of family or anything else. <clears throat> so look, this is going to be real easy. We have the most amount of leverage we've ever had in the labor movement. Think about it. We've got 1.3 million members strong with 360 deep, 360,000 deep throughout this entire country. We are unified. We know the issues. We've identified them. But most importantly, we have stated our intentions. And when you state your intentions to people and you look them in the eye, I believe they take you serious. And we've stated our intentions to UPS. 22 fours are going or you're on strike. PVDs are going or you're on strike. Part-time wages need to go, need to go up. And we've got to reward the long-term part, long-time part-timers as well. We need to make certain that we fix subcontracting, get these gypsies out of our yards and make sure that teeps or asses are in these seats. We need to make sure we fight against technology. Technology that has held all of you hostage for the last 10, 15 years. They do not need to be looking at us while we're doing our jobs. That will be a strike issue. We also need to make sure that we protect and create as many jobs as possible for part-timers. We need to create jobs as a result of technology. We need to capture every single thing we can. And look, failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. If you're not in this fight, you better find another career. Because look, what we're going to do in these negotiations, we are going to make history. We are going to make an example our Fortune 500 company so that when we go to the table locally, when we go to the table regionally, we go to the table nationally with any employer, they're going to remember the beating that UPS took and the leverage that we had, and they're going to say, I don't want any part of that. Now, in any battle, in any battle, in any fight, we're going to get bruised up. We're going to get banged up. But you know what? We're going to get up and go, one more round, UPS, one more round. Look, the reality is this. We are going to get the best contract that this company has ever seen before. You and your families, our goal is to make sure that we set this up for the next generation coming in. We're going to make sure that we leave this organization better than we found it, but we also need to take this contract, right? I'm telling you, PS, this, again, stating our intentions. We're going to be able to take this contract, and we're going to go to the non-union Amazon workers and say, when you're a team, so you're going to get health and welfare, you're going to get pensions, you're going to get guaranteed wages, you're going to have a path to a long-term career. And that's what's important about this contract. It's not just about winning, because we're going to win. There's no doubt in my mind, right? No doubt in my mind. But it's about organizing our competition, making certain that we level the playing field and we continue to set the bar as high as we can so that every single labor organization out there has the intestinal fortitude and we lay the template down where this is achievable. This is going to be a victory for success through the entire labor movement. And I've been up in Capitol Hill telling these politicians, you don't come with us, you're done. No more money. You don't support our members, no more money. Fred and I were in South Africa where we got support from 118 countries represented by unions. 118 countries are supporting this fight. They want to make certain that when we make an example out of UPS, that not even 
nationwide, but globally, UPS feels the pain because they need to reward the people that make them the greatest success, and that's the teachers that go to work every single day. So look, in closing, I got a message for UPS. I got a message for any employer. Number one, watch what's going to happen, because if you don't want this to happen to you, stop behaving accordingly, right? Two, when you take on 1.3 million Teamsters, 360,000 UPS workers, it's a full contact sport. Put your helmets on and buckle your chin straps. It's on. Thank you. We're here at Teamsters Local 25 in Boston, the old local of current uh, president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Sean O'Brien. I'm standing here with the man himself. Sean, it's been about a year exactly since your administration came in. What are you... I think it's 376 days. 376 days. So what have you been hearing from the members in that time? What are you seeing well, here on the Well, there's tremendous energy, um, not just in the UPS, but in the labor movement in general in the Teamsters. Our leadership team, we've made certain one thing biggest priority from day one is to make sure that we unify our strongest ounce of uh, strongest uh, leverage is that's our membership make sure they understand that we're gonna fight for them we're gonna take direction and we're gonna deliver for them um, look I'm back here at the greatest local union in the entire country um, but look the reality of it is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fight hard we're gonna get the best contract and we're gonna we're gonna make UPS reward the people that make them the success and what can people around the country whether they are unionized or not whether they work for UPS or not what can of working people around the country do to support you they have to embrace this fight because what i said up there i meant today's fight may not be yours but it could be yours tomorrow so if you're not engaged in paying attention then you know you're selling yourself short because this could be you tomorrow it could be all of us tomorrow ups is going to be the most important critical fight that we have in the labor movement it's just not a teamster issue now it's a labor movement issue and if we can do it which we're going to do it and we're going to get the best contract we're going to set the tone for organized labor for generations to come hell yeah and well you what's your message to uh ups management right now buckle i'm sure up. they're listening buckle up baby buckle up thanks so much brother. thank you man appreciate it and then after we're done i'm going to tell them to ice up <laughs> beautiful thank you so much Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.